bold act of auction. See the blow in my ammunition? In your state happened in the 1827, if I recall correctly. There were still enslaved people into the 19th century, and there is a long tradition of the hundreds of years of tradition of there being enslaved people who were both traded, bought, and sold as property in New York State, and actually working in New York State when, in New York City specifically, especially when New York City was more of an agricultural basis. There's the Lot House in Brooklyn. There was definite traces of there being domestic slaves as well as plantation slaves. This is stuff that was not secret at the time, but has been forgotten by history. There were large plantation-type farms in Brooklyn and in the Bronx that I know of. I assume probably in Queens as well, though Queens was said a little later. There is the African burial grounds in Lower Manhattan. In Queens, in fact, we are working with a group in Elmhurst that has an African burial ground. That was a woman in the iron coffin. They discovered an African-American woman who had died there, a freed woman, but who had died there in the early 19th century and was buried in a metal coffin and that was then dug up when the area was being redeveloped. This is all throughout New York City. This was a mm -hmm. stop on the Underground Railroad. That is not provable. The Underground Railroad is a metaphor. It was not an actual choo-choo train because it was actually profoundly illegal. It's hard to find documentation on whether or not the specific sites were actually used for fugitives to escape from enslavement down south on their way north. It is provable, however, that 227 Duffield Street was a hotbed of abolitionist activity, that the Truesdales were very fervent abolitionists, but whether or not any enslaved or formerly enslaved African and African Americans on their way to freedom passed through that house is unknown at this point and may never be knowable. However, the fact that the Landmarks Preservation Commission moved to designate and landmark the house and that the city has now moved to buy it means that that house will continue to exist as more research happens. Like a lot of things in history, sometimes we have artifacts that tell us what it might have been like. Anyway, that's a lot of all we have in history sometimes. And the best way to understand history is to physically encounter it. It's one thing to read a book that explains what happens. Books are wonderful, wonderful windows and doors. However, actual windows and doors also work really, really well when you're trying to imagine, especially for children. Take them to a site and say, this is a site where this and this happened. History museums are incredibly important to our civic fabric. They are also very difficult to put together and fund and maintain. We've seen that throughout COVID. All of our museums have taken a real beating. I know that there's a lot of interest in the community, in the local community, and also the activist community to make it into some kind of center for the African diaspora and to talk about abolitionism and talk about the black experience in New York. And I think that we could really use more of that. Simeon Bankoff is the executive director of the Historic Districts Council. And finally, the Senate on Monday, just moments ago, confirmed New Mexico Representative Deb Haaland as Interior Secretary, making her the first Native American to lead a cabinet department 